about 1,280 kilometers from Anchorage and only about 1,250 kilometers from Chukotka Autonomous Okrug sits the island of Unalaska and it is home to the city of Unalaska, which is spread between Unalaska Island and the tiny Amaknak Island. The total population of the city is about 4,200 people, which makes it the largest population center on the Aleutian Island chain. Accordingly, this makes it the westernmost city with more than 2,500 residents within the United States. In other words, you're not going to find much going further west, except for some tiny towns, research stations, Cthulhu, and eventually Russia. This population is supported by Dutch Harbor, which in terms of volume of its catch is the biggest fishing port in the United States and third in terms of dollar value. The Bering Sea has a continental shelf that is one of the world's largest and supports a rich ecosystem, but is also one of the most intense patches of ocean on Earth. Strong winds, freezing temperatures, and icy water are normal. This combination makes for some of the most ferocious waves on the planet, where the water can rise and fall 9 meters on a normal day. Being out in these waters making a living is no easy or safe task. So, who were the first to come and try and make a living? Why were Russians here? Why was Dutch Harbor bombed in the Second World War? And what makes crab fishing one of the most dangerous professions in the world? Let's roll! Native Unalaskans, called Unangan or Aleuts to non-Unangan, have lived on the island for at least 10,000 years. They are considered the indigenous people of the Aleutian Islands, and they have their own language though few speak it today, with the majority remaining either Russian or English. According to the 2000 US Census, 11,941 people identified as being Aleut, while 17,000 identified as having partial ancestry. However, prior to sustained European contact in the 1700s, approximately 25,000 Aleut lived just on the archipelago. As elsewhere, the natives suffered greatly due to Europeans bringing over diseases and disrupting their way of life. Speaking of Europeans, the island was first noticed in 1741 by none other than Vitus Bering, a Danish cartographer and superstar explorer in the service of the Russian Empire. Around this time, at least 3,000 Aleuts lived on Unalaska, and Russian settlement began in 1759. They were mostly interested in the hunting of seals and the trade of their fur. The Aleuts weren't happy about their new neighbors. So, four years later, this initial settlement was attacked and destroyed by them. This event triggered bloody reprisals against the natives. By 1787, many Aleut seal hunters were enslaved by the Russian American Company and forced to harvest seal fur. The Russian American Company was state run and had the mission of establishing new settlements in Russian America, conducting trade with natives, and carrying out colonization. By 1840, only 200 to 400 Aleuts still remained on the island, and many of them had been converted to Russian Orthodox. This is the Church of the Holy Ascension in Unalaska. It is one of the oldest churches in Alaska, built between 1894 and 1896 on top of its predecessor, which had been built in 1826. The Russian Orthodox evangelization effort was so successful that today's Aleut population is still strongly Orthodox, and the founding priest, known as Saint Innocent of Alaska, composed the first Aleut writing system and translated scripture into Aleut language with the use of the Cyrillic alphabet. And so the first written words by the Aleuts looked like Russian. In the aftermath of the Crimean War, which Russia lost, Tsar Alexander II began exploring the possibility of selling Alaska. He was concerned that it would be too difficult to defend the territory in any future war, especially against the British. So on October 1867, the United States purchased it. Inflation adjusted, the cost is equivalent to $140 million in 2021, or about 39 cents per acre. And so, Unalaska first reported on the 1880 US Census. Of its 406 residents, 230 were Aleut, 162 were Creole, that is mixed, Russians and natives, and 14 were white. At the time, it was the ninth largest community in Alaska, and the Russians had almost entirely vacated the state at this point. Overall, Alaska would remain sparsely populated until the Klondike Gold Rush, which began in 1896, bringing much prosperity and increasing the population greatly. Fearing the threat from Imperial Japan during World War II, 
The neutral United States started fortifying Dutch Harbor in 1940, resulting in the construction of a naval operating base and a fort finished by September 1941. The Japanese had planned to occupy islands in the Aleutians in order to extend their defensive perimeter in the North Pacific, making their mainland more protected from a US invasion. On the 3rd of June 1942, Onalaska was attacked by Japanese air forces, commencing the Battle of Dutch Harbor. The bombing marked the first aerial attack on the continental United States. The Japanese launched their attack from aircraft carriers parked some 290 kilometers southwest of Dutch Harbor. The planes arrived early, around 4 a.m., and attacked the town's radio station and oil storage tanks. While the defending soldiers had been on alert and prepared for an attack, this had caught them off guard. With no clear direction from headquarters, gun crews from every battery quickly ran to their guns stationed around the harbor and began to return fire. The next day, the Japanese carriers launched a follow-up attack. More targets were damaged, including some grounded aircraft and army barracks, oil storage tanks, aircraft hangars, and a few merchant ships in the port. This Japanese airplane is known as the Akutan Zero. It was captured intact by US Air Forces on Akutan Island. It had been shot down during the Battle of Dutch Harbor, and it had crash-landed on the nearby island. Although the aircraft survived the landing nearly intact, its pilot Koga died on impact. The wingmen circling above had orders to destroy any Zeros that crash-landed in enemy territory. But as they did not know if Koga was still alive, they could not bring themselves to do it. After repairs, it became the first flyable Zero acquired by the US military. During the first two years of the Second World War, the Zero was the most agile and lightweight fighter in the skies. Having access to one was a big boost to US military intelligence. Fearing a Japanese attack on other Aleutian Islands and mainland Alaska, the US government evacuated hundreds more Aleuts, placing them in internment camps in southeast Alaska, where many died of measles, influenza, and other infectious diseases, which spread quickly in overcrowded dormitories. Shortly after the end of the war, the US military abandoned its Dutch Harbor outpost, until with the growth of the King Crab fishery, in the 1970s, many of these buildings were repurposed and used as warehouses, bunkhouses, and family homes. Beginning in the 1950s, Unalaska became a center of the Alaskan king crab fishing industry, and by 1978, it was the largest fishing port in the United States. In 1980, at the peak of king crab industry, Alaskan fisheries produced up to 91 tons of crab. However, by 1983, the total size of the catch had dropped by up to 90% in some places, and certain species have been dropping significantly in the last few decades also. Several theories for the drop in the crab population have been proposed, including overfishing, warmer waters, and increased fish predation. In any case, the Bering Sea is unlikely to ever contain the same abundance it once did. Perhaps it's not all bad, as statistically, Alaskan crab fishing remains the most dangerous job in the United States. In 2006, the Bureau of Labor Statistics ranked commercial fishing in general as the occupation with the highest fatality rate, 141.7 per 100,000 deaths each year. That is almost 75% higher than the rate for pilots, flight engineers, and loggers, the second most hazardous occupation. But Alaskan crab fishing specifically is even more dangerous, with over 300 fatalities per 100,000 per year. Over 80% of these deaths are caused by drowning or hypothermia. The fishermen are also susceptible to crippling injuries caused by working with heavy machinery and gear. All of this gets documented in great detail in the infamous show The Deadliest Catch. Unalaska also happens to have the title of being the capital of bald eagles, and it is the national hotspot for bald eagle attacks. The town puts up signs every year to remind people that there are nesting eagles in the area. They will do whatever it takes to protect their young, and that typically includes launching themselves at people who come too close to their nests. Fish are the staple of the bald eagle's diet, and since Unalaska processes more fish than any other point in the country, the eagles want to nest as close as possible to their food source. And while Unalaska has no trees, eagles raise chicks on the tundra, 
and cliff outcroppings. Their nests are accessible to people, which make the eagles a lot more territorial. So, if you have ornithophobia, I'm sorry you watched this. And Unalaska is not the place for you. Next, you can watch my video on Nome and learn about the years of the Klondike Gold Rush, which turned everything around for Alaska, completely reinvigorating the state. Patreons, I salute you, and thank you for your generosity.